Here's the Eager Beaver, down with a broken throttle cable. We'll get her fixed up good and back to gnawing away on the grass. This is a piece that's part of the trigger. It acts like a spring and pushes the throttle back down to the throttle close position. I've torn into three of these McCulloch trimmers lately and they've all been broken off. The trigger spring helps take the load off the cable. The spring on the carburetor will close the throttle. Here's ultimately the trouble, is the end is missing from the throttle cable. So we're going to put in a new one. We'll get the air cleaner out of the way for better access to the throttle cable. So here's the old broken cable, and then fresh out of the mailbox, a brand spanking new one that's in a lot better condition. Got ends on both ends. The recoil's a little sticky, so since this is a part, it's a good time to dig in and see what's going on here. The spring fits in a metal drum which is cleaned and lubed. The spring is wound up by hand until it fits into the drum, then carefully reinstalled in the head with the rope spool. Here it is, stuffed back in. Springs put back in. I get the uh, cover plate there on it before things get out of hand again. under control. It's really not under control, but more on that in a moment.
there's a channel down the middle that the cable runs in. The cable needs to be there and moving freely. We'll get them all started before we really snug up any of them. There's four bolts holding the motor on. The old primer bulb is cracked open. The new one in comparison is in much better shape. The prongs on the new one are also about 30 thousandths of an inch wider. The square openings at the end need to be opened up slightly with a file to accommodate the wider prongs on the new primer bulb. <clears throat> Just enough left. I'll put a new piece of fuel line on where it feeds back into the tank. This is the return line from the primer bulb. It's left long for now and I'll cut it off when I know I've got just enough. This looks like about the right amount here. Time to hook the new throttle cable to the carb. The old fuel line is actually pretty tough too, so we're just going to go ahead and replace that as well. The outside diameter of the new fuel line is larger than the original. The hole is enlarged to accommodate and is a little smaller than the fuel line for a tight fit. We'll start with a little angle on the new fuel line to make it easier to start in a hole. The pointy end of the tube has served its purpose. It can go back to a square end where the filter attaches. Okay, the clunk is positioned at just the right spot. So we'll cut this off at just the right spot. And this is the inlet fuel line. We'll go on a carburetor right now. There we go.
Well, we're out of parts and it looks like it's all back together again. Original purpose was to replace the throttle cable. It makes the throttle back here move. And of course we found a few other things to deal with. The most fun, of course, being that spring that pulls the rope back in. But it's in good shape now. And we'll gas it up and give it a whirl. It started right up on the first pole. The starter rope doesn't retract because the spring blew out. Since it was just a part, it's cleaned up and will go fast. Here's the spring stuffed back in the little metal drum. It's not particularly difficult, but you do need some patience to wind it up small enough to fit back in the drum. And it's a lot more fun than a fidget spinner. It may have jumped out since the metal drum was tapered out slightly. Now on both sides of the opening, it's had a little extra loving with a pair of ice grips, so it's no longer tapered and will hold the spring in better. Now that I've had to completely tear into everything again, I'll change out the starter cord too. We'll put a knot on the end of the new cord, which is also melted on the end to keep it from fraying. Wrapping a piece of tape around the rope before cutting it, then melting the cut ends together with a small flame will keep it from fraying. Here are a few shots of the new rope on the starter spool. This piece has to engage in the spool here without the spring exploding. I'm giving it about one turn of preload to make sure that the rope comes home. Once the knot is on the other end in the handle, it'll be a little bit shorter too. The end of the rope is melted so it doesn't fray. We have the handle, little washer, a knot, and the end of the rope is melted so it doesn't fray. I just love it when a recoil spring stays together. A few bucks for a new throttle cable and some fuel line and some fun rewinding the recoil spring. And this eager beaver is ready to gnaw on some grass for a few more seasons. If you like these videos, leave a thumbs up or comment and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching. This eager beaver doesn't have this, but here's some pictogram instructions on a similar McCulloch trimmer that also needed a throttle cable. They put the operating instructions on the handle for you. You read the manual, put on your personal protective equipment, 
and then stay 15 meters away from the teeter-totter. Is it a teeter-totter? Maybe it's a cannon. Or some kind of big honking squirrel slingshot. It's hard to tell.